Hello guys, if you eat food at all, this video is a must watch for you. You will soon see the reason I said so. So I want you to put on your thinking cap the way I have done mine. Let's get into this life changing discussion. So a quick preamble before we start the main discussion. It is estimated that in the year 2050, about 80% of the world population will be living in the urban areas. What does that mean? imply it means that there will be more need for food there will be more demand for food thereby making urban agriculture or urban farming a very very relevant subject matter one of the ways to actually farm in small spaces in the urban area is to farm in containers or in sacks like you can see here now but there is something about that that we need to also look at. Currently, most of the sacks that we use, they are synthetic and there are issues surrounding the use of synthetic sacks. So two major issues are associated with the use of synthetic sacks or synthetic uh, boxes, as the case may be. In my previous video, when I was discussing planting yamid hips and sacks, I made mention of this. These are remnants from previous harvest. And you can see that these materials, they are synthetic. Even though they are disintegrating, so to speak, but they are not really biodegradable, which means they will not be incorporated into the soil. They will not really decompose. This is a major challenge. That is the number one challenge. The second challenge is, well, it's regarding the behavior of people towards the use of synthetic materials. Many persons don't like it. They would have loved to garden, they would have loved to farm using sacks. But the option available is majorly synthetic. And there is this fear, there is this phobia. Will the chemicals inside this not leach out and enter the food? That is still an issue, a topical issue that needs to be addressed. But these two challenges can actually be solved by just going natural or going organic. That is the focus of this particular video. I showed us some hints previously in some of our videos where I showed this bag. This was that same bag that you saw before now. This is an organic bag. So I'm actually working on something currently. I'm working on comparing the use of organic bag compared to the normal synthetic. So this is the project that is currently ongoing. It is still a work in progress, but I want collaborators and other relevant stakeholders to key into this project that has the potential to not just only create jobs for millions of people all over the world, but we'll also make food available for practically every household because these organic bags that you see now can actually be made from things that are all around us some of which are even considered as waste so we are really going to delve into this discussion just let us go to the next point so guys this is an organic bag it can actually be made from basically about four sources from four raw materials but this particular one is made from jute or maybe even sisa it's not really designed for this kind of stuff but i'm just experimenting with it but let me show you a few things that it can be made from about four of them but the fourth one will even amaze you it will shock you so this is one of the raw materials you can make that bag from is organic. This is actually jute plant. Commonly in our part of the world, we commonly refer to it as a wedu. So this is jute plant. You can get fibers from it that you can use to make that bag. The second one is sisal. Um, sisal is not around me here now, but I'll just give you something that looks like it. That is even the third raw material that is currently being looked into. So this is jute. The second is sisal. What is closer to sisal in this uh, environment here is pineapple leaves. So let me show you that. So these are my pineapples in my farm. 
But I want you to know that the leaves are currently being considered. They are now using them. As you can see, this leaf, you can actually extract fibers from them. That is what is currently being looked into. And of course, this one is abundant in our environment. So jute, scissor, scissor looks like pineapple, if you know it very well, but it's actually a cash crop that is made for fibers so that they can use it to make uh, bags and other things that are organic. So guys, this is the fourth raw material that can be used to make that bag I'm talking about. These are banana stems. Of course, this is a segment of my farm with bananas, plantain and all that. You can see how tall they are. In fact, that one is already fruiting. Now, one thing you must know about this. After harvesting the fruit, every other thing in it is considered a waste. But this is what we can use to create jobs now, to revolutionize urban agriculture by using the fibers you get from here to make grow bags for different things. You can use them to make grow bags for vegetables and all that, things that you can just plant around you. Currently, I'm even going higher. Going higher in the sense that, you know, vegetables, you just three to four months, you're already harvesting even less than that time. So when you even use those kind of grow bags within a, a short period of time, you'll be, but I'm even taking it to the next level where I'm using those bags to grow tubers, to grow tubers like potatoes, either Irish potato, sweet potatoes, uh, even yams, things that can last up to a year. So that is what I am experimenting on. But currently, uh, people are even using the fibers from this to make sanitary pads, to make um, even um, artificial hair for women and all that. But I'm considering this. Why can't we add grow bags? If you are a company that you are already making those things, consider making organic grow bags that every household all over the world can actually use since we are now considering urban agriculture as a very, very important concept in the future. I'm sure that this will be a game changer. But then, let's go further to see the things I have done so far and what I have modified so far. So guys, we are back to my little lab. All right. I started this about two months ago. I planted yams and yams would take up to about six months to get matured. I want to see how durable this organic bag will be. So that's why I'm comparing with the synthetic. Well, I envisage a problem already. This organic stuff, they don't really like water. Now, and I'm planting them in the open. And I'm expecting that this is actually July, the peak of rainfall in the southern part of Nigeria. So it is actually the best time to do this test. But I'm already envisaging some things. Uh, the bag has started breaking and I understand why. I only just, it's not designed as, it is not really designed to be a grow bag, but I'm using it because it is the only organic one available in my environment. So I have started, but I had to now reinforce so, okay, this is Irish potato I planted in the same bag that I planted yam. So, it's basically experimental. The same thing with this one. Uh, I planted these yams in different ways, but that's a discussion for another day. But just for you to know, that's one. Now, this is a uh, cardboard uh, box, popularly known as carton. So, I'm also experimenting on this. I'm planting potato in slips inside this. The pattern is a discussion for yet another day. This is, of course, another jute bag. I'm planting potato. Potato will take me about three months. So in here, I also planted Irish potato just like this. So I'm actually working on combining so many things. And uh, that will lead us to another discussion another day. That is vertical farming, kind of vertical sack farming. We'll discuss that another time. But in this bag, carefully look at it. I planted sweet potato this is irish potato just coming up and there is uh yam somehow i made them three layers 
that's a discussion for another day so if you have not subscribed subscribe so that you'll be able to follow us but what i'm actually telling us now is this because of the challenge i had with that first one where it's just one layer you know it's just the way it is i use it the way it is it's, it's tired breaking but i reinforced it hoping that it will last through the season but whatever the case it's experimental whatever we find will still uh, document it but i have done a little bit of modification because of the breaking and i wanted to withstand uh, the rainy season i tried to improve on the tensile strength of the bag by doubling it i doubled it there's a way i folded it i'll discuss that in another video it's not just in the scope of this video so i folded it such that this one is now thicker than the former but this is a single bag but if you look at these two bags i planted the arms in them they are jute bags but i've modified them what i did was to double this one i doubled this particular bag the way i doubled it, this, this we have two bags here and also two bags here the way i doubled this one is different from the way i doubled this so this seems to be a little bit thicker than this but they are just two bags there's a method that i use i will discuss that in subsequent um, videos so what is the major challenge i'm envisaging or we should envisage when it comes to the issue of using organic bags they are very susceptible to rainfall and so and this is where it is very very important that stakeholders in this aspect we're talking about industrial chemists material uh, engineers and you know all other stakeholders let's come together and really see how we can design organic grow bags that will withstand you know tough times in during the rainy season bags that will last even up to say even one year it is possible with these materials if we really come together i'm ready for collaboration i want to collaborate with relevant stakeholders i have very many ideas on how these are just experimental but i have brilliant ideas on how we can modify this bag to suit our tropical crops i'm experimenting on yams now if you can actually grow yams inside jute bag or organic bag successfully I don't think there is there's any other crop that you will not be able to grow so this is more like the upper limit if we're able to get it done with this it means we can grow more crops alongside with even your yam so let's come together i'm open for collaboration i'm going to leave my email and a number on the screen so that we can you know talk if you have other ideas you want to share with respect to this please come up with it because this is actually the future so guys at this point i'm hoping i've stimulated some form of discussion i've stimulated your thoughts let us see how we can provide jobs create you know you know make food available for every household and that way we are also helping our planet these bags they are biodegradable there is no fear of it leaching anything into the crop so if we can develop this with the raw materials we have banana trunks everywhere plantain trunks that we are not using instead of leaving them to decay we can actually make them into things like this that can revolutionize agriculture even in the future like i've said earlier i'm hoping to collaborate with investors relevant stakeholders in institution agro institutions even government parastatas so i think this is the beginning of the future thank you so much for always supporting us we have other things we are still coming here to learn subscribe if you have not done so and thank you so much god bless you